Hi all. Okay, let's do some more plow stuff. Before we get started, I, I've got some more of these business quotes here. Uh, this is a sheet my mother got at work. She used to work at a department store warehouse. This is basically a bunch of women unpacking boxes, clothes, and things like that. These are the types of jokes that they would pass around. Here's a few. It's uh, what people say and then what it really means. So if someone says, I don't think you understand, what it really means is shove it up. <laughs> <laughs> Next one is, uh, I love a challenge. What it really means is this job. <laughs> uh, next one. Uh, yes, we really should discuss it. What it really means another meeting next one is I don't think this will be a problem what it really means is I really don't give it uh, next one he's somewhat insensitive what it really means he's a uh, next one she's an aggressive go-getter what it really means is she's a busting bitch. And last one, uh, I think you could use more training. What it really means is you don't know what the f you're doing. Okay, so uh, just a few things that I bumped into. Uh, uh, in my Ford F-250 manual, there's a few things I want to point out. If you just do a quick search, let's see here. I just did a quick search for a F-250 manual. Here, I'll show you how I did that. Uh, I like Yahoo. Let me go uh, F-250 manual and then down here file format choose PDF and do a search and I'm not sure which one it was here but here's the link to it in case you're interested uh, and then that brought back this guy here. And a few things that I wanted to point out in case you're new at this stuff. On the dash here, this guy here, this guy here is for the transmission temperature. Transmission fluid temperature. While you're plowing, if the temperature is too high, the transmission temperature is too high you're supposed to uh, stop for a while because uh, your transmission overheating can damage it and then page 134 see, this is going to be uh, 135 they talk about overdrive I don't plow in overdrive you know uh, when you when you start the truck it's always an overdrive the overdrive stuff is when there's a, a circle around that D uh, I'm no genius at this stuff but I think when like when you go on the freeway you know your car shifts first second third fourth and then I think it goes into overdrive at higher speeds or something like that so, so they say when you plow or pull heavy things turn off the overdrive and on mine you just press that little button here there's a little button on the end of the uh, stick shift uh, you, and then when you turn off the truck turn it back on it automatically goes back into overdrive so that's what this section is about it says overdrive can be deactivated by pressing the transmission control switch at the end of the gear shift. 
So just press that little button, turns it off. The transmission control indicator, that's this light here, will, will illuminate at the end of the gear shift saying, hey, it's off, it's off. If the light is blinking, if it flashes st steadily at any time, have the system checked. So here they're showing it's flashing. So uh, drive is activated when the transmission control switch is pressed. This position allows for forward gears except overdrive. OD lamp, overdrive off lamp is illuminated. That's this light here, off. Provides engine braking. Engine braking is like when you hear a truck go, you know. Uh, the uh, the engine is slowing the vehicle down, not the brakes. Use turn this off when driving conditions cause excessive shifting from overdrive to other gears, such as city traffic, hilly terrain, pulling heavy loads, trailer towing, and then I suppose plowing too. Uh, I read in this thing here that we're going to go over turn overdrive off. So uh, you're not supposed to go real fast when you plow. I think 15 miles an hour is tops. So I don't think I don't think it would ever go into overdrive anyway. So, uh, but they still want you to turn it off. So, uh, like I said, I'm no genius at this stuff. I don't, you know. To return to overdrive mode, press the button in again. Okay, so if you get a truck, that's something that you might want to research. On page 150, they talk about four-wheel drive. On mine, I have two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive high, four-wheel drive low. So four-wheel drive low is for plowing heavy stuff. Four-wheel drive high is for when you go faster, when you snowplow, like a large parking lot. A small driveways where you're pushing in heavy snow would be four-wheel drive low. So that's what this section is about. So there's different ways to change this. You don't just flip the switch. Uh, shifting from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive high. Rotate the four-wheel drive control to four to four by four high position at speeds up to 50 miles, 55 miles an hour. The electronic shift four-wheel drive system is designed to engage four by four high when the vehicle is moving. So flip the button while the vehicle is moving. If shifted to 4x4 four four high, 4 wheel drive high while at a complete stop, 4x4 four four may not engage and the 4x4 four four indicator may not illuminate until the vehicle is driven above 5 miles an hour. Do not shift into 4x4 four four high with the rear wheels slipping. Okay, so what I see from that, it's best to be driving down the road above five miles an hour and then flip the switch. So it looks like they're saying here you can change it when you're at a complete stop, but it won't click in until you're moving above five miles an hour. Okay, so here they show you how to go 4x4 four four high back to two-wheel drive. Uh, why would you want to do that? I think to save gas mileage. Yeah. Rotate four-wheel drive control to two-wheel drive at any forward speed while the vehicle is moving. Disengagement of the transfer case and front hubs may be delayed due to torque bind, which is caused by driving on dry hard surfaces. 
or performing light turns while using the four-wheel drive system. Uh, you do not need to operate the vehicle in reverse to disengage your front hubs, but it will eliminate any torque bind and allow for the system to immediately disengage. And then here it shows shifting 4x4 high to 4x4 low. Bring the vehicle to a complete stop. Depress the brake. Place the gear shift in neutral or depress the clutch. Move the four wheel drive control to 4x4 low. Hold the shift conditions until the low range indicator light illuminates. there's a light on the dash. If the low range indicator light does not illuminate within 15 seconds, let the vehicle creep at a speed above one mile an hour, then repeat steps one through five before reporting any shift concerns to your dealer. So stop the truck, put it in neutral, and then flip the four by four low. Uh, what happened to me is I was plowing my relative's driveway. I, I forgot to shift from two-wheel drive into four-wheel drive. And I got stuck in the, the driveway. The vehicle wouldn't move. And I remembered that you could shift into four by four low when the vehicle stopped. You know, There's no way I could get it to go five miles an hour. So it wasn't going to go into four by four high. So put it in neutral, shifted to 4x4 low, and then it, then I could move. So, uh, these indicator lights, let's see if I can find a picture of the dash here. So here on the dash, you can see it says 4x4, uh, four four. and then I, this one is the 4x4 four four low. So this one would be 4x4 four four high and this one would be 4x4 four four low. Yours may be different. So, And then one more here. They've got a section in the back of the manual on how to snow plow with the uh, F250. So Ford recommends that the Super Duty F-Series used for snow re removal include the snow plow package option. This option is available on 4x4 only and includes the following upgrades. A highest front wheel GAWR. Uh, okay, so GAWR is gross axle weight rating, big, big axle, a front steering damper. Uh, installing the snowplow weight limits and guidelines for selecting and inst installing the snowplow can be found in Ford Truck Bodybuilder's Layout Book Snowplow section found at this link here. A typical installation affects the following certifica certification to government safety laws such as occupant protection, air plague airbag deployment, braking, lighting, looking for an alterer's label on, on the vehicle from the snowplow installer certifying that the installation meets all applicable federal motor vehicle safety standards. The total accessory reserve capacity is shown on the lower right side of the vehicle's safety certification label. This applies to Ford completed vehicles, 10,000 pounds. Okay, well they're, they're getting into some, te some pretty technical stuff there. What I wanted to show you was this part here. 
do not use your vehicle for snow removal until it has been driven at least 500 miles. Uh, the attached snow plow blade rest restricts airflow to the radiator and may cause the engine to run at higher temperatures. If you are driving more than 15 miles where air outside temperature are above freezing, then then angle the plow blade to full left or right to maximize airflow radiator. So what they're saying is ang angle the blade uh, so ma so more air gets into the radiator when the temp when the temperature is is above freezing. I've read and I've been told usually angle the blade to the right, you know, it's close to the truck on the passenger side because then if you hit something you don't do as much damage. And then here if the temperature is below freezing it doesn't matter if you angle the blade because the temperature is cold enough that it's going to keep the radiator cool. So if you are driving less than 50 miles at speeds up to 40 miles an hour in cold weather, uh, you do not need to angle the blade. Follow the severe duty schedule in your scheduled maintenance guide for engine oil and transmission fluid change intervals. Uh, they talk about the airbag. Uh, on mine, there's a, on the dash, there's a little knob. You can turn off the passenger airbag. Uh, I picked through this section a little bit. They don't actually come out and say turn off the, the airbag. It looks like a little knob. You'd stick a coin in it and turn it. Okay, so this section here, page 110 talks about uh, the knob to turn off the airbag. I guess the thing is there, if you're snow plowing, you hit something hard, you hit a curb or something, the airbag will come out. So they're saying you can turn it off if you need to. Yeah, transmission operation while plowing. Uh, shift transfer case to 4x4 low when plowing in small areas at speeds below 5 miles per hour. Shift transfer case to 4x4 high when plowing larger areas or light snow at higher speeds. Do not exceed 15 miles per hour. Uh, do not shift the transmission from forward gear to reverse gear until the engine is at idle or the wheels are stopped. If the vehicle is stuck, shift the transmission in a steady motion forward and reverse gears. Do not rock the vehicle for more than a few minutes. The transmission and tires may be damaged or the engine can overheat. Do not rock the vehicle if the engine is not at normal operating temperatures. Do not rock the vehicle for more than a minute. The transmission and tires may be damaged or the engine may overheat. Okay, so those are just a few things that I wanted to point out that are different. If you've never driven a truck, if you've never driven a plow, uh, uh, yours may be different. Check out the manual for your truck. Okay, so that's all I want to do with this one. See ya. Bye.